The People's Democratic Party, PDP, Timmy Frank and others have called for the rejection of the nominations of the ex-service chiefs as non-career ambassadors. And protest looms as Lagos Judicial Panel gives approval to Leki Tollgate reopening. Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cohn. The nominations of the ex-service chiefs as ambassadors has been termed as a plot by President Muhammad Buhari to use the decoy of ambassadorial appointments to shield the immediate past service chiefs from the investigation over alleged killing of innocent Nigerians and crimes against humanity while in office. According to political activist Timmy Frank, the nomination of these ex-service chiefs to represent Nigeria in foreign countries is an international embarrassment and a new low for the country's image. Now, the list of nominees by the president include General Abayomi Olonishaki, retired, uh, Lieutenant General Tukop Burutai, uh, retired Vice Admiral Iborite Ibas, retired Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, retired Air Vice Marshal Mohammed Usman, amongst others. Now, joining us today is former Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Timmy Frank. It's good to have you join us, Mr. Frank. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much for having me. And uh, I want to say good evening to Nigerians. And uh, before I proceed with this interview, I want you to permit me, first of all, to apologize to Nigerians. I've done that before, and I want to do it again. The reason of this apology is very clear that uh, I was one of the actors in 2015 that brought General Buhari and the APC government to power. And in doing that, whether anybody likes it or not, some of us has acknowledged that we've committed sin by bringing General Buhari, you know, to Nigerians in 2015. And uh, some of us, whenever we have the opportunity, we will keep begging God for forgiveness because General Buhari is a sin to Nigeria. And uh, every one of us who took part in 2015, you know, to bring the APC government and General Buhari to power, I apologize on behalf of every one of us, because today, if we did not took the decision we took in 2015 by bringing General Buhari to power, we are not going to be in the dilemma that Nigeria is passing through today as a country. So I use this opportunity, you know, to apologize at the same time to the former president, good luck, Jonathan, that we thought his regime or his government was bad, not knowing that we were living from fry pan to fire, and uh, okay. today, the answers are there, the results are there. So I want to use this opportunity to appeal to Nigerians. Despite, you know, selling a bad product to Nigeria, we tried in 2019 to correct what we gave to Nigerians in 2015. And we did everything we could to make our corrections. And uh, every Nigerian know locally and international knows very well clearly that, uh, you know, General Buhari did not win the 2019 election. We he get, stole the we, people's will, and we that will, is why will, Nigeria get is to, passing through these challenges today. We will get to that part. Of course, I will revisit that. But let's go into the meat of today's conversation. You are amongst the people who are kicking against uh, Mr. President's move uh, uh, to um, recommend these ex-service chiefs to be appointed as non career ambassadors. Why do you um, kick against it? I mean, the president is within his rights to appoint whoever he wants to, uh, bearing in mind that he, you know, maybe knows what's best for those positions as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, you might say the president know, but I will tell you clearly the president did not know what he's doing. The president we have today does not even aware of what is happening in the presidential villas are today. Today, I can tell you clearly that, you know, there is vacuum in governance in Nigeria. There is no leadership. And every one person 
that is serving under this General Buhari's and APC government is taking the opportunity and advantage that there is no government in place. There is nobody in charge of aim of affairs in the presidential villa. So I will correct you to tell you clearly that uh, sorry, we did Brand. not have a president I'm because sorry. if we have a president, what we are passing through today as a country, we will not pass through these challenges. I'm and sorry, if we have Mr. a Frank, president, I want to take you up on that. Clear. I want to First take you up all, on that. You cannot you, make that kind of allegation. The country does have a president and the president is leading the country. Whether you like what he does or not, you cannot in any way rule out the fact that we have a leadership of well, sorts. And he is the I president you, of this country. I agree, I agree with you in the other way, and because we have a president that believes in protecting, you know, cows more than human life. And uh, you can see the examples are there. And that is why whenever you criticize the henchmen, you know, the. It will take uh, 24 hours, you know, you'll get a rapid response from the presidential villa, you know. So, but <clears throat> as I can tell you, as I'm trying to let you know today, truly, if we have a system in place, uh, it is very sad that uh, just really today we saw the breaking news, we saw some of the online media who made it very clear, like a sensitive office like the NIA, which is very, very sensitive. You can see one of the president's aides has been appointed as a director of NIA. That shows you the incompetence of this government. But it is very clear. And again, when you see things like this, that take all back to the reason why the former service chiefs, the four of them, four of them, despite all the atrocities that they committed for past five years, we saw what happened in Nigeria. We saw what the Boko Haram did in the Northeast. We saw all the insecurity crisis. Despite the outcry, it took the president a very long time, very long time to make a pronouncement that he has dropped them, not knowing that he has plans for them, to reward them, to shield them from all the atrocities they've committed. These four persons are people today who should have been facing, you know, the ICC, the International Criminal Court. These four persons today are people who should be answering questions to all the security agencies in Nigeria. What did they do with the funds during their time in the military? So it is very sad and it is very clear. You saw what happened in the Lekki massacre, the Lekki targets, what the military did under to Kubratai. So, for God's sake, we're expected right now, this government, to surrender these persons to the International Criminal Court, to surrender these persons to the Nigerian people to face trial. Neither the president is trying to reward incompetence. Okay. I say it clearly that these persons are very incompetent. And we are watching as Nigerians to see the actions of the Senate, the boss now lies in the hands of the Nigerian Senate to neither decide whether they are going to clear them or not. But this is the time this Senate will prove to Nigerians, truly, if they are for Nigerians or they are the loyal boys, like right, some persons will say. Let me come in there, Mr. If they clear, it, let me if they clear, if they clear these four persons, it has shown that this Nigerian... Mr. Frank, let me just ask you some questions because you're going on and on. Um, the president's nomination, which you have criticized, saying that he's trying to shield these people. Again, let's not forget that the president, I'll play the devil's advocate for today. Um, the president used to be a general in the army. Do you, is there no room to presume that maybe the president is not taking this um, position uh, out of, like people have said, uh, you know, because he wants to reward his friends or he wants to shield them? Do you not think that this is also maybe for security reasons, for you know, other reasons that are best known to the president, other than the politics of it all? Because these men were not politicians. They were service chiefs, people who have worked their ways through the ranks, you know, uh, in the Navy, in the Air Force, in the Army. Why would this be a political thing? Why are we not looking at other, the other side of it as maybe for security reasons these men have been put on those positions? There is, my sister, there is nothing like uh, security reasons here. 
the president himself is a failed general. It is only a failed general so. that can accommodate these incompetent service chiefs that just passed away. These are people, you saw what they did with the Nigerian military. Nigerian military has never been corrupt in the history of Nigeria, the way Nigerian military is corrupt today, under the wash of General Gura Tai and the rest of them. Can you point to one or two so of these things clear. that you are the calling president corrupt? Can you point to one or two of the things that you think were grossly corrupt and incompetent on the path of these service chiefs? You said what? Well, you're saying that the, that the Nigerian army has not been as corrupt as it is today under the watch, or as it was under the watch of General Burutai and other service chiefs. So I'm asking, can you point to a few things? Let's talk about those things in detail that makes you feel that they were incompetent. Let me, let me tell you first of all, if it is not because of corruption or incompetence of these persons in question, tell me how many are they today in the camp of the Boko Haram compared to the Nigerian military. You the, it is very clear, we've seen videos. If it is not because of corruption, our soldiers are not motivated. Our military men are not motivated because even their welfare is not being given to them. It is very clear, we've seen videos to show. We've seen videos showing where Nigerian military are running from the bush because they don't have, they don't have enough resources to fight. All these are corruption. And every day in a country where you hear every day, Mr. President, to borrow $2 billion for Nigerian military, $2 billion. Today you hear $5 billion. Next tomorrow you hear $1 billion, all for security. Let's see how many guns General Burata and these service chiefs bought. Let's see how many equipment, how many fighter jets they bought with all this money. They share this money to themselves. It is very clear. And that is why the morale of the Nigerian military today is weak. It's very weak. So these are the sentiments we're talking about. That to... this military under Bratai was very corrupt. And everybody saw it clearly. Even the governor, the governor of Bruno State. I think I remember Bratai is from Bruno State. Even his own people, his own people has confirmed that Burata is incompetent. And such kind of a person in a sin government will appoint somebody like Burata and the other remaining three persons to become ambassador. But the entire country has made it very clear that these persons were not incompetent, that, that these persons are not competent. It is very clear. The Christian Association shouted to the president, sack your service chief. The Northern Leaders Elders Forum came out to do the same thing. Every part of the country, the local and internationally, everybody says, sack your service chiefs. The president refused to do so because the loot of the military was being shared in the presidential villa. The beneficiaries of this so-called fraud in the military, it's not just in the military. This money was being shared in the presidential villa. And that is why it took time for the president Mr. Fr Mr. Frank, to drop them. Where you, and after where dropping you, them, Mr. Frank, and after dropping Mr. Frank, them is I'm sorry, them. your national TV, when you're that. making these allegations, you have to be able to point to the facts. If you say that monies were being shared in the presidential villa, do you have proof? Do you have facts? Were you there? Um, how can we ascertain oh, that these are not just mere claims? Sister, let me tell you clearly, without fear or favor, I'm not scared. I'm not mixing words. The presidential villa, the government officials under Gerard Buhari's government are all part of the corruption in the military. If anybody says I'm not saying the right thing, then they should take me to court. As, remember, some time ago, I came up with corruption allegations against the vice president. Until date, they said they were going to sue me. Almost one year down the drain, I've not seen any court later. So whenever I speak, I know what I'm talking. Authoritatively, I have no, I have no mix of words that there was deep corruption in the military and those co-perpetrators of these corruptions are in the villa. This is the most fraudulent government. Look, for me to rise to the level of spokesperson of the APC, you should know that I know what I'm talking about. This is a party that I took part of. I'm one of the founding fathers of APC today. Before I left this party, what? you know, so I know so much. My sister, I don't just speak from the streets. And they know. 
They know I know so much about this government. They know I know so much about APC. So, but one thing I want to remind this government today, that these service chiefs, what that you are worried like, you should protect them in Nigeria, but you cannot protect them before the Nigerian people. I will tell you clearly, the atrocity that they've, the atrocity that they've committed, we will not let it go. Those that died in Lekito Gate, their death cannot go in vain. The NSAS movement must have been over, but we've not forgotten. Mr. Frank. Some I of us will fight Mr. those Frank. that took part, not just the military, Mr. but Frank. those within the APC that took part to frustrate the Nigerian youth, to Mr. frustrate Frank. the Nigerian people. Can I ask a question? It's very easy, and, 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 and do not take this the wrong way. It's very easy to stay where you are, to say we will not let this happen, we will not let that happen, as opposed to people who are within the country fighting for the soul of the nation. But you're not in Nigeria. It's easy for us all to go out of the country and say, and point fingers where we know that we're safe. Um, as we speak, the Lekki toll is about to reopen. As we speak, uh, the NDDC boss that fainted while we were, um, the probe was on at the House of Representatives is yet to return to the House of Representatives to uh, speak on how these monies were expended and you know where the monies are. Uh, and proof that these monies were not misappropriated. There's so many things that are happening in this country that we all keep saying or giving that blanket speech of, oh, we will not let this happen. But uh, you are outside of the country and you have been away for a long time. In fact, when you broke ranks with the APC and you said you were no longer a member of the party and you're still apologizing till today about the fact that you brought this government to power, but what are you doing to make sure, aside from just sitting there and saying, we will not let this happen. How much power does your words or do let your me, words hold when it comes to let me, change let me tell you, Nigeria? Let me tell you clearly. My not being in Nigeria does not stop me from airing my views. My not being in Nigeria does not mean I'm no more in Nigeria. And I must tell you clearly what I'm doing for Nigeria as a country outside Nigeria today is bigger than what I'm doing, what I was doing when I was back home. We need people to motivate Nigerians in diaspora. We need people to put Nigerians together. And very soon you are going to see the results of my being outside Nigeria. We are putting a lot of things in place to, to checkmate those, those government people today that are undermining the development of our country. Very soon you are going to see some certain actions that, that I promise you that we're not just sitting down, you know, in our various places. Like minds, we're talking to each other. And very soon we're meeting anytime from now, you know, in the United States of America. Like minds, where we are putting measures in place to bring everybody, everybody in General Buhari's government, who are stealing from the people, who has killed the people unjustly, very soon you are going to see the rest come from international community. International community cannot help us except to help ourselves. So some of us today, we're not just sitting down, we're taking our case to the right channel to seek for support for international outcry, to let them know that this is the most fraudulent and most corrupt government in the history of Nigeria, to let them know that those people in this government that are stealing from the people must not be allowed to go scot-free. Take it from me. With the appointment of this first service chief, that is going to be a test case of why I'm outside the country. If today, today, I'm very aware, like I said in my earlier statement today, they've been going around seeing how they are going to buy senators with $100,000 each. Here you go again with another uh, it's allegation. Not an allegation. My sister, please, it's another please allegation. Me. How can we ascertain? We are that not in the room. How do we know that these things are true? So much of money. And this government really wants to impose them as an ambassador to Nigerians. So they are doing everything they can to lobby senators with $100,000 each so that they can pass through the screening. But I want to make it very clear. We're already aware of all of this. They can succeed in the Nigerian Senate, because it is very clear that this is the worst Senate ever in the history of Nigeria, this ninth Senate. This is the worst, but they can scale through in buying their way and getting their clearance from the Senate. But I bet you from the minute the countries will be mentioned, where these four persons will go, we are going to receive them in that country. 
Discussions have already started. We are mobilizing. They are going, they must pay for their price of lucky tokens. They must pay for the innocent people they've been killing in Nigeria. Trust me, this is going to be a test case of my being outside Nigeria. Okay. So right. if the Nigerian Senate want to test the will of the people, they should remember Nigerians voted for them to get there. Nigerians did not vote for them to go and be copied and paste Senate. Okay. Nigerians voted for them to be the other side of government that would checkmate the executive. All right. So, but if they fail right, to do their we, job, because of time, trust me, I, I have two more Nigerians who are going to do their job for them. Because of time, I'm going to pose, it's a two-pronged question, so I'm just going to tie both together so we can wrap things up. Um, I'd like to take you back to the NDDC um, situation. Um, so some years ago, you uh, spoke up about the rot in the NDDC, and you had asked the chairman at the time to deal with it. If not, it would spiral out of control. I want to take your thoughts on this, because I had told you briefly uh, that the Senate had issued a warning, or rather the House of Reps had issued a final warning for these men, uh, especially Professor um, um, Bowe, to show up and make sure that he gives account of these monies, um, billions of naira that have either been misappropriated or not been accounted for. Now, my second question is that there are people who are saying that you have been speaking up a lot lately and they suspect that you are pivoting because of 2023 and you might be angling for something uh, as all parties are, you know, um, re-strategizing and getting ready for the elections. Are you running for an office sometime in 2023? Do, are you intending to return to the country for that reason? I'm not, I'm not, I don't have any plans to run for any political office in 2023. My agenda in 2023 is to fight to see how we can have our democracy strengthened. Because as of today, our democracy is in shambles in the hands of incompetent leadership. My duty is to advocate for a good governance in 2023. My duty is to ensure that this wicked and satanic and anti-people's government, APC, must be kicked out of power in 2023. These are some of the things some of us are doing. So I don't have any personal agenda. Mine is to ensure that a true can candidate, a true candidate that will that will uplift the, the hardship of Nigerians, that will bring you know stability, that will reconcile our country. Because as of today, under the government of APC, Nigeria is, is breaking. Nigeria is uh, the, 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 the bitterness between north, south, and east is, is getting up to a level where if we don't have a good leader in 2023 to, 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 to lead you know, the people of Nigeria, they might not be Nigeria. So these are some of the things, you know, I'm working towards. So I don't have any personal interest of running. I just want to remain, you know, a political activist that I am to fight to make sure that, uh, you know, Nigerian youth must be respected. Nigerian youth must be taken serious. Nigerian youth must be given every opportunity to get, you know, whatever that belongs to us as Nigerian youth. Okay. So that is one of the, you know, my major fight in 2023. I and coming to the NDDC, I'm tired of speaking about what is going on in the NDDC because you can't keep shouting that there is corruption because it, in, in, in Jirabari's government, once you are corrupt, you've been celebrated. Some of us have been shouting, you know, that there is so much of rot in the NDDC. But in decade of, for the past five years under the world, of General Buhari, NDDC has been the worst ever we can talk about. I'm, I'm tired of talking, whether from the Senate or from the National Assembly, it's just Nollywood that is playing out in the particular issue when you talk about NDDC. So I'm tired of talking because if you talk from now to tomorrow, as long as the beneficiary of the corruptions are in the presidential villa, there will not be any action. So it is sad that the people of Niger Delta will live with what we've seen today, but uh, I can assure you all of this will come to an end in 2023 by the grace of God. We will do everything to ensure that every one person who has looted Nigeria must be brought to book. We will do everything to ensure that there must not be, there must not be hiding place for them by the time they leave office. And let me tell you something today. One of the things we are putting in place, Nigerians in diaspora, we are meeting, and these are some of the things we want to talk about when we meet in America anytime soon, that every one person under the Nairobi government, from minister to senator, to, to, to member of National Assembly, to parastatas that are stealing Nigerian funds. 
they can be protected in Nigeria, but they cannot be prote protected in London. All right. They can be protected in Nigeria, they cannot be protected in America or in right, Germany. Frank, so Nigerians are coming together. So whenever we see them in the streets, right. when they are going to see their children in their we, various we schools We want to thank you America, very much for coming we'll on the show, Mr. Open. Frank. Um, Timmy Frank is a former, was a former Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and now he is a political activist. Thank you very much, Mr. Frank, for being on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Go. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the Lecky Toll. Yes, of course. The Lagos Judicial Panel has okayed Lecky Toll Gate's reopening, but Nigerians have taken to Twitter to protest that those who carried out the alleged shooting of innocent citizens must face the law before the Lecky Toll Gate can be reopened. Our next set of guests will be talking about it right after the break.